Hello, so today we're going to be looking at IB Biology A2.1, which is talking about the origin of cells, and this is higher level only. So first let's talk about how compound formation occurred. So this is the formation of things like DNA, lipids. How did this happen in the prebiotic period? So the prebiotic period is the time on earth before life existed, right? Pre-bio, pre-life. Um, and the important thing to know is that in this period, the atmosphere had a lot less oxygen, a lot more methane and CO2, and having no oxygen means that there was no ozone layer, because ozone is formed from oxygen, uh, and as we know, the ozone layer protects us from UV, so there would have been a lot more UV, and the temperatures would have been a lot higher. It's also thought that there was a lot more lightning. So, the higher UV and the higher amounts of lightning would have caused chemical reactions to occur. At least that's what's thought, right? Uh, a lot of this is theory, because obviously no one was there to witness it. But again, the two main factors that are believed to have caused chemical reactions and compound formation are UV and lightning. Once living organisms existed, they would have raised the concentration of oxygen in the oxygen, sorry, of oxygen in the atmosphere and reduced the concentration of methane and CO2. Okay, now let's look at what is a cell and why is it the smallest unit of life? So what even is a living thing? We need to understand that a living thing, it's not a simple definition. We need to define some conditions. So there's three. The first is that it must have the ability to use energy to maintain a highly ordered state. So cells are highly ordered um, structures. They have DNA inside them. They have different uh, subcompartments. So they meet this uh, requirement. Also, cells can self-sustain. This means that they are able to live by themselves. They don't need anything else. There's organisms that are just one cell, like bacteria. And then the third is that they must have the ability to pass the first ability onto offspring. And cells can do this because they can divide and form new uh, independent cells. If we go deeper into a cell, for example, this is a mitochondria, mitochondria can't do this because they can't self-sustain, right? They need a cell to exist. Therefore, we define cells as the smallest unit of life, right? There can be smaller structures, but they're not living things because they don't meet the three conditions. So it's important that you remember those conditions, all right? Before we continue, let's do a little recap question. So this is similar to what you would see in the paper one multiple choice section. Uh, and the question is, what is hypothesized to have caused carbon compound formation in the prebiotic period? Okay, you can pause here if you want to think about it, but the answer is A. So the answer is higher UV radiation and lightning. B is true, there was higher temperatures, but that's not the cause for carbon compound formation, right? So this is something that's very important throughout IB when you're doing papers. More than one answer might be correct on paper, but you need to decide which one is correct for the question specifically, okay? Um, so hopefully that makes sense. Once again, there were lower oxygen concentrations in the atmosphere, but that wasn't the cause for chemical reactions to occur, all right? Okay, so um, you, you will know that cells can divide and create other cells, and so cells can be traced back in history. However, where did the, the first cell must have come from somewhere. So the same way we say that carbon compounds emerged at some point, the same thing uh, applies to cells. So these are the four steps that must have happened for cells to arise, right? So first of all, catalysis, which is the control of reactions, of chemical reactions, of ha having control over which reactions occur, because otherwise it would be chaotic, there would be no organization whatsoever. The second is self-assembly, which means uh, compounds joining together to form larger compounds. For example, DNA is an example. DNA is the assembly of nucleotides, um, as we learned in A1.2. And then we have compartmentalization. Um, so this is where the cell must have had a membrane developed to enclose it, um, because otherwise it wouldn't be a cell, right? It would just be in the open air. And then the fourth is the cell replication of molecules. So the ability to replicate molecules such as DNA to pass on the genetic material and to create more cells. Okay, so remember the name of these four steps. That's quite important and a brief um, overview of, of what this means. Um, once again, let's do a really quick recap question. So what conditions are required for something to be considered living? Once again, you can pause now, but the answer in this case is B. So it needs to use, uh, well, have the ability to use energy to maintain a highly ordered state, and it needs to be able to self-sustain. However, having smaller subcomponents is not 
necessary. This can be quite tricky, right? Because cells do have subcomponents, but this is not a requirement for a living being, okay? Again, make sure that you are answering the question and not just writing down an answer of what's correct. Um, okay, all right. So we said that in the prebiotic period, carbon compounds would have arisen because of lightning and UV, but how is this known? Well, Evidence for this came from the Miller-Urey experiment. So this is this experiment over here. What they did is they simulated a prebiotic atmosphere in a flask. So they had a flask where they had methane over here, hydrogen and ammonia in number one. Then they also had a water vapor here in number three. And they also had electrodes which could produce electrical discharges simulating lightning, right? And with all of this, what they saw, and this would circulate, so the system circulated constantly, as it would have in a real atmosphere. And what they saw is that after a couple of days, some compounds formed which are very similar to those found in living beings. For example, they saw more than 20 amino acids, and that's a, a vital part of, of living beings. So this proved that with these conditions, carbon compounds could have just appeared spontaneously. And this was quite important. Okay. So, how did membranes come to be? Remember, membranes are really important as they allow for compartmentalization. And as we saw, that was step three in uh, a couple of slides away in the origin of cells. So, it, it, it is necessary for cells to have originated. So, membranes are formed by phospholipids. This is an example of a phospholipid. There's a hydrophilic head, so this means that it's attracted to water, and a hydrophobic tail, which means that it's repelled by water. Um, and when a molecule is both hydrophilic and hydrophobic, it is called amphipathic, so you know. Great. And it's also proven that phospholipids, when they're released in water, they just assemble into a bilayer. So two layers, right, of phospholipids, bilayer. And also that the bilayer assembles into a sphere. So a spherical structure, which can be a cell itself if it's big enough, or vesicles if it's a smaller subunit within a cell. A vesicle can carry water or other elements in cells. So how did the first genetic material occur? Was this RNA or DNA? I'm going to let you guess so you can pause now and think about it, but it turns out that RNA was probably the first genetic material. Now we know that cells have DNA as their genetic material, but it's most likely that at the start it was RNA. Why is this? Well, it's because if it's just following logic. So replicating DNA requires enzymes. And you don't know this yet, but just so you know, having enzymes requires DNA, right? So it doesn't make sense. It's a paradox. You can't have enzymes without DNA, but you can't have DNA without enzymes. So it's unlikely that DNA was the first genetic material. However, RNA can replicate by itself without the use of enzymes. Actually, there's like viruses still use RNA as their genetic material. So it's most likely that we started with RNA since it's simpler and then we moved to DNA. Why did we move to DNA? Well, this is because DNA has much higher genetic stability and complex organisms such as humans, animals, plants have very, very long genetic materials. So what you want is for it to have genetic stability because when there's no genetic stability, that leads to mutations and things like cancer um, and just deformities, abnormalities, etc. that you don't want. So this is why DNA was probably chosen at some point by evolution because of its stability, but initially RNA because of its simplicity. Hopefully that's clear. Okay, Okay. so now on to LUCA, or the last universal common ancestor. So this is the idea that, as you can see in this image, we all come from the same ancestor. So this includes animals, plants, bacteria, you name it, all living organisms, we come from the same ancestor. It's the idea of evolution, basically. This does not mean that LUCA was the first organism to ever exist. It's likely that there were other organisms that just went extinct. You can think of the dinosaurs, for example, right? But because some have gone extinct, LUCA would have been the most recent, right? So that the last universal common ancestor, and that's where it comes from, right? Um, so what's the evidence for LUCA existing? Well, the first of all is the genetic code being universal. So the genetic code is how bases in the DNA are interpreted. As we know, DNA is the genetic material, but actually how is DNA important? It's because of the nitrogenous bases. They have a meaning. And this meaning is identical in all living organisms, with a few exceptions, but um, basically it's the same. And this is 
this provides some evidence that if we all share it, right, including from us to bacteria, it's probably because we all come from the same ancestor. And then similarly, we all share some genes, such as the genes coding for the ribosome and some enzymes. Um, once again, it's it's the same type of proof, right? Okay, so how have things been found about LUCA? Well, there's two main techniques. One is paleontology. So this is the studying of fossils. And this has proved that LUCA must be at least 3.42 billion years old, which is really, really insane. Because Earth is actually only 4.5 billion years old, which means that LUCA must have emerged about a billion years into Earth existing. Um, and then it's believed that cells are even older. So you remember how we just said that LUCA, even though it's the last universal common ancestor, it doesn't mean it's, it was the first organism to exist because some might have gone extinct. Well, this idea applies here. So cells are older than LUCA, but it is not known exactly how old. And then, sorry, the second technique I should have mentioned is genetic information. So if you look at the number of differences between two genomes, so that is the, the genetic information of two organisms, that difference between them is proportional to the time since they diverged, right, in the, in the tree of ancestry. So this can also help us estimate how long ago um, an organism might have uh, formed. Okay, so genetic information actually has led to some findings that LUCA must have had genes for anaerobic metabolism, so this is metabolism without oxygen, and the use of CO2 and nitrogen. This leads us to the idea that LUCA probably lived in hydrothermal vents. Why? <laughs> well, because hydrothermal vents are, so there are cracks in Earth's surface where hot water gushes out, and it gushes out with iron sulfide. There's almost no oxygen, there's high concentrations of CO2 and nitrogen. So therefore, it is, it is highly probable that LUCA emerged near hydrothermal vents. Okay. So this is all for the content of this section. I hope everything was clear. Again, you can leave questions in the comments. But let's do one last recap question. Now is the time to pause if you want to think this through. But the answer to why is it believed that RNA was the original genetic material is D. Again, remember DNA replication is dependent on enzymes and enzymes come from DNA indirectly. We'll look at that more in further topics, but that's all you need to know for now. So it's impossible for DNA to replicate without enzymes. And since DNA is required for that, it is impossible that DNA was the original genetic material. That is the reason why it's believed that RNA was the original material. Okay, so I hope everything was clear. Let me know if there's any questions or feedback, and I'll see you soon for the next topic. Thank you.